How's it going everyone, and welcome to my fourth and final video in my daily profile series. In this video, we are going to be focused on the seek and destroy profile, and personally this is a profile I wish to avoid, however I will discuss how I can approach it if I was to take entries within it. Similar to my previous videos in the series, I'm going to focus on London and then the New York AM session. So what does a seek and destroy profile look like on the daily chart? Well, it is going to be an indecision candle. If you don't know what an indecision candle is, please check out my video on open, high, low, close. Now an indecision candle is where price opens and closes at relatively the same point with no direction throughout the day. So what does this look like on a lower time frame? You can see we open up the day, we don't really have any direction. London tries to make a move in one direction, but that is just countered. And each time we reach outside of the range, we just fall back into the range, right? We cannot expand in one direction. And the only difference between a bullish example and a bearish example is just how the daily candle closes. Now, how and why do these occur? Well, this generally occurs when the market is either waiting for some sort of high impact news. So for example, the day before CPI, FOMC, or NFP, or there is a lack of direction on the higher time frame charts, such as the daily chart. Now, one way I recognize this is I take a look at Asia, London, and New York. So I know I said I focus on New York and London, and that is going to be the focus. I'm going to take a look at London and see what it did in relation to the Asian range. So generally with a seek and destroy, London fails to have any direction, and so what happens is London will take both sides of the Asia range. So you can see it takes Asia low and Asia high, and then that sets up consolidation or seek and destroy conditions for New York. Now, although I prefer to avoid this price action entirely as I focus on expansions, if I was going to be looking to anticipate or trade a seek and destroy profile, what would I do? What I would do is focus on trading back into the range. So instead of trying to play out of the range or from the inside out, I would be trying to look from the outside of the range back in. And what I would do for this is mark out the equilibrium or discount and premium of this London range. So you can see from the low to the high, here is my 0.5 and looking to trade back into the range, right? This would be my first target. And then I can use my second target as the lows, right? Cause price I'm expecting it to oscillate. So as we move lower here and swept out the London lows, if I'm anticipating price to continue to consolidate, I'm not anticipating price to break out lower. I'm anticipating price to go back into the range. So once again, marking out the equilibrium and looking for price to trade back inside the range. Now, another thing I can do is mark out that Asia range, the daily open or whatever range is sitting in here. When we deviate outside of that range, it's going to act like a magnet and price is going to go rebalance it. So you can see here in London, when we exit the range, we trade back into it, exit the range, trade back into it, exit the range, trade back into it. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about before I get into a few examples is another seek and destroy condition for New York. You can see in this case, London did not sweep both sides of Asia and just consolidate but London actually had the expansion and created most of the daily range. If most of the daily range is already created in London, I don't really have high expectations for New York to have a large move. So this sets up low probability conditions in which I expect price to consolidate. So this is also where I will generally avoid looking at price. So here we are in our first example. I'm going to have the daily open high low close marked out. I'm using the power of three indicator as well as some session boxes. And that is just the indicator called underscore boxes. And these are the times I have listed for those. The only reason I'm using London as two to eight thirty is I use two to five, but then I get a blank space. So I just extend it to the start of the AM session. So letting Asia form here, you can see, we just range and then we form our Asia low and high. Now, if we are going to have a consolidation day, and that is probable following a very large range day that can set up consolidation conditions, I'd want to see if we can displace out of this range here. And you can see we take our Asia low here and we can't get any displacement or a breakout of this range and we come back inside. 
So now I'd want to see our Asia high. Here we get our Asia high, and we can't get a breakout of this side of the range either, right? We are just consolidating or going from external liquidity back into this range. And if I extend these lines out, this is what I was talking about with the PDF for price trading back into this range. So let's see what happens in the New York session. You can see we get a move out of this range. Where do we go back to? Inside the range, right? And if we're going to mark out our premium and discount of the range, you can see outside of the range, we go and hit our equilibrium. Now let's see what happens next. All right, so now we have a new discount and premium range from here to here. And you can see we go back into just around equilibrium of that range, the daily open, and into this initial range here. And so we just get this consolidation day that has no true direction. So you can see we do have a little up close candle here, but relative to our opening price, we closed 80 points on NQ away from that. So that's not much range throughout the day, right? It's kind of that whipsaw price action. So here we are with our next example, and this we have Euro USD on the 15 minute chart. And you can see we have our Asia range here marked out. And so we'll mark out the high and low of that range. And let's take a look at London here. So you can see we start to get a move outside of that range, and then we get an aggressive move right back into the range, right? So now I could look for price to trade back inside of this range or go to the other side of the range. Now at the other side of the range, you can see we can't displace or break out of this side of the range either. Where do we go to? Well, marking out discount and premium of this range. We go back into equilibrium of this range, back into this initial range, and back into the daily open, right? So extending these lines out for the rest of the day, let's see how this plays out. You can see we have just been sitting inside this range. And here we now make a new low. Now, unless we are going to break out of the range and have an expansion lower, I'm expecting price to trade back where? Back into the initial range here, back towards the daily open, and I can also use discount and premium of this leg down, right? So let's see what happens. And I will just track that with the discount and premium as it goes lower. We make a new low. I just continue to track that. And you can see we go back and hit our equilibrium and back into this initial range, as well as going towards the daily open. So you can see as we let this day finish or play out, once again, we exit this little range right back into the range, and we have this indecision candle on the daily. The main point of adding this video into my daily profiles is not for me to actually participate or trade this profile. It's more so to learn from it and know when to stay out of the market. So I hope you enjoyed the daily profile series. If you guys want another series, please let me know what you would like in the comment section below and I will get through them all. But thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.